So Dogramag's Labyrinth is looking pretty hype right off the bat. This is the first chapter we had fully inside of the Labyrinth, fully inside of this game that Selene has set for everybody to go after Elevesaria's heart. And I think there's, there's going to end up being more mysteries kind of like involved in all this. But for now, we were set up with a super hype matchup for the first full chapter in, and we already have this match. We have Kirin versus Laxus. And Natsu, like, the thing is, like, when you look at the areas they're at, like, we know that, we know Natsu should be the strongest in the guild with Dragon Force. But, like, say, like, outside of that, I do think Laxus should be able to beat him for the most part. Like, if Natsu goes anything higher than Fire Dragon King mode, I think Laxus would lose. But, you know, if he confined himself at that level, I think Laxus would be, be able to pull through, especially with Laxus's uh, newer feats with his uh, Red Lightning Dragon mode and stuff. But, uh, right now, if you just looked at him, uh, maybe Selene isn't gauging Natsu off his full power, but Laxus is a contender for the strongest person in the guild. Natsu, Guild Arts, and Laxus are pretty much in that trio. Natsu with Leading Edge, again, Dragon Force, and then further forms and stuff beyond that being absurdly OP and broken. But Laxus, we know how strong he is. And we know him based off of, like, not only, like, stuff in Alvarez or, you know, the last, like, big power creep after that year time skip uh, happened. We know, it, like, obviously his fight with Wall. And then now, like, no different Kyria, Madmul, and Skolion as well as his big epic fight with Urza, we know that Laxus is extremely powerful. Now, the thing, though, about that is we know way more backing for Laxus. We can connect Laxus not only to his own feats, but to tons of feats in the story, the narrative, obviously the way that the characters see Laxus. And it's not like... It's not like how Natsu... Kind of like is still scared of Mirajane and Urza. Like Natsu can definitely beat both of them. I, I don't think with that much difficulty. I think Fire Dragon King with Natsu should roll over Urza. But with Laxus, Laxus is obviously a different story because Laxus was more powerful than Urza when they fought. And that was Urza with three brand new extremely powerful swords all in succession with each other on Laxus. And Laxus who was intentionally not dodging because of how his uh, new form worked. But when we compare him to Kirin, Kirin we only have stuff to scale him from. But the thing is that one thing to scale him from is Suzaku against human form Selene. So this is a fight that even though you go in it thinking, you know, obviously big hype Laxus man is, is ready to fight. And he already defeated two Dragon Eaters right before then. But it's like the gap between Skolion Mad Mole Kyria level people, and again, I do think Skullion is stronger than Madmole and Kyria, but obviously not to the tier of Laxus when we saw Laxus completely steamroll Kyria once before. So, now we have like an understanding of him, but it's like, the the gap between them and then going up to somebody who fought human form Selene is crazy, because they, they should be equal to Suzaku, we already know that, we, we know that these guys are on that same tier. Granted, with Haku... Haku is way more kind of silly, so with him, we don't really see that kind of like powerful aggressive side, and we haven't seen anything really from Misaki either. Kirin though, obviously we're going to get the next chapter, but Kirin already realistically has the advantage over Laxus just from somebody that, you know, that he sits on level with, having feats way above Laxus. Nothing Laxus has can compete with defeating human form Selene. Like, that, that's just extremely powerful, and we could get something from Lactus to make him stronger, but I, I'm really looking forward to both sides of this match. Kieran is, is definitely, in terms of design, he's the most intriguing because he looks like a villain. The other members of Diablos realistically don't look that villain-like. You can kind of count Nibaru, but not like evil. Nibaru just looks like he'd be something kind of just really weird and creepy. Whereas, Kieran looks like a big bad guy. He looks like an arc boss by himself. So, the hype around him, on top of what we already had, is just setting up for like a really big match. But I I do think that Kieran is going to come in this as the more powerful member. Kind of like how Laxus and Jura went. 
but I think a little bit heavier. Like, I, I kind of imagine Natsu versus Laxus in the Fighting Festival, but Laxus is Natsu in that scenario, where Kieran is just much more powerful. So, we'll have to wait and see. And it's also going to have to really depend on whatever Kieran's Dragon Slayer attribute is. And I really don't think Mishima would possibly have Laxus steamroll him, given the hype around all the Black Dragon Slayer Knights, given the hype around Kieran. And it would be really weird just from the idea of Glaxus being able to do that because, one, it would pretty much dehype this entire arc. It would just be Glaxus goes around and beats everybody. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be the case. And I don't see Glaxus at least currently beating Suzaku whatsoever. I think Suzaku would completely decimate him in a 1v1 fight. Like, nothing Glaxus has even comes remotely within the same tier as his Black Purgatory Slash. That just, that just ends him. So, right now, I, I really am hoping next chapter, overall, I, I just want a good flex of abilities. I want to see uh, Laxus maybe with a new technique. Maybe with... Uh, uh, it's going to be really weird for them to do feats right now in terms of, like, showing destructive capability. But it's like, anytime they do, it's going to be a big deal. Because... The Dragon God, Dogermag, is like, he makes up the Labyrinth. So Labyrinth and the creatures are all as durable as him. It's like made up of the same material. So if any of the terrain and stuff is damaged, that should mean that they would be able to damage Dogermag. Granted, the weakest of the Dragon Gods, still a Dragon God class character. Still extremely powerful. So, we'll see. I, I'm really hoping it plays out kind of like we get into the fights with Kieran and Laxus, and then maybe once they start getting their bigger moves, we see areas starting to get destroyed. So it's like we have an understanding of where their levels are at and where, like, Dogermag was at as well. Because there's a good area that Dogermag could sit at. I, I, I definitely think that he's stronger than the Black Dragon Slayer Knights, but I feel like it would be kind of like how... Suzaku versus Selene went, where it took just everything he could to set up his ultimate finisher in order to win, where it didn't come down to overall stats and capabilities, it came down to one monstrous technique to end out the fight. That's my guess anyway, because Elevseria should be strong, but if Elevseria uh, like, couldn't really do a whole lot to Dogermank's power after he died, that just kind of tells me it's, it's sort of like... Suzaku and Selene territory because Suzaku was getting overwhelmed by Selene's attack and it's only because he was able to set up his ultimate move that he was able to defeat uh defeat her whereas like Natsu versus Weak and Alderaan because I I would assume that Weak and Alderaan and human form Selene are the same level uh that just makes sense to me but uh Natsu once he went into Dragon Force was still getting contended a bit by uh Alderaan but it was really that massive end attack that was able just to completely decimate him and end the fight Whereas that, su you know, super move pretty much is the easiest way to say it. You know, anyone who's played a game, or I guess an ultimate move, rather. I guess really not this case, it is a secret art. But y you know what I mean. That end-all, be-all, this is my Hail Mary attack by all-in kind of move. Being able to out, like, beat somebody that is otherwise overall stronger. That's just something I can see making the most sense. So maybe Dogermag is somewhere at human form kind of Selene. Or maybe, like, a little bit stronger. And then once we see attacks uh, at their level, like say, th this is the last thing I'm going to kind of put in here. Say it's kind of like Suzaku's Black Blade Slash could destroy uh, the everywhere that the attack touched uh, in the Dogramag Labyrinth. And that's his all-out attack. But say like Kieran at his, kind of like in his strongest state, whatever if he's got like a form or something, He's able to do multiple attacks like that. Not like he's able just to do that all the time, but say maybe if Suzaku has one attack they can do that, Kieran has three, and he can do it three times or something. That would be pretty cool. And I, I could see that as like a very easy way of setting up a... Kind of like an idea that they're on level, but Kieran is the current potential strongest out of them. But other than that, though, I, I definitely don't see this uh 
I don't see it going one-sided either way, but I definitely see it in Kieran's favor. I'm, I'm actually really excited for this next chapter because it's... I figured this would be way later in, and we would have something kind of preoccupying Laxis in the meantime, and maybe we'd get Kieran flexing against somebody else. Um, I'm kind of okay with this, on top of the idea of that I, I do want Laxis to lose, because Laxis has a lot of feats, and Laxis obviously got to fight Urza and still win, Whereas, I think someone like Gajil and Grey both really need a lot. Like, Gajil for sure, I think, out of everybody in this side of Fairy Tale right now, everybody in there, Gajil deserves the most feats. He deserves to be able to walk out of this arc with a new form. I'm really hoping so. As much as I really want Grey to get a new form, I think Gajil deserves one more. Because he, he only got a temporary power-up in Alvarez, and he hasn't gotten really any fights in 100 Years Quest. Because he got a skirmish with Natsu, but we didn't get to see the whole thing, and he got to beat Alderaan up, but like he was low on magic already, and he didn't get to make he didn't get to have it like a gigantic fight. He mostly just threw some punches and defended against some stuff. Like he had the physical strength, but that's that's all he really had to compete. He was gonna he would have a better chance if he actually had his magic, I would assume. Just for that transition of how uh, that much size would work for him. But, anyway, other than that, I, I am very much excited for this chapter. Uh, what is it? Uh, it's Friday, so 11 days from now that we're going to get to see this. I, I'm guessing it's going to take up about maybe like half the chapter or something. Like, my only big hopes is to know what Kieran's Dragon Sling attribute is. Um, Kieran's is definitely the one I want to know most out of the remaining Diablos members that we know of. I, I really want to know what his is. Still got my fingers crossed for radiation, but we'll see. Other than that, they'll comment below. Thumbs up the video, my friend, the like button, subscribe, and check out my other videos. But that, appreciate it. everyone's already subscribed. Thank you all for listening.